What's up, guys? It is kind of 2 in the morning now, so don't mind me if my hair is wet. I just got out of the shower. And um, it is Saturday, vlog day, and I already shot a vlog, but it was just not interesting enough. And I was kind of, I had so much to do today. I want to finish everything before I get to the vlog. Okay, so I just want to make this vlog with a peaceful mind of ease. Um, so here it comes. I finished everything just now. Hopped in the shower, came out, um, after I make this video, I'm going to go to sleep, wake up tomorrow, edit this video, and hopefully post it up tomorrow, or even post it up later on tonight. Um, what are we talking about today? Today there's actually a, quite a bit I'm going to be discussing, and I actually put a list down for this. Um, so the Omega clone, I'm not going to do a review on the clone since I already did the review on the original. No point of doing the clone. Um, I'm going to go over that, the Dovepo ELVT, I'm going to give you an update on that and a picture of the guts. Results are kind of interesting. Um, the coil builds that I actually vape on and it's like proven to vape well for me. Go ahead and put up pictures through that and I'll be narrating through that. Um, the Vamo V5 final update after I've been vaping on it for whoo, so long. I did fix that center pin by taking it apart. I'll go when we get to that. The Nemesis clone body that I was using, the blue tube. Um, let me see if I can find it here. The blue tube, and I said that um, I'm going to start using this more often. The blue tube right here, Nemesis blue tube. This is the clone. Um, an update on that, okay? So let's go right to it. The Omega clone. This is the Omega clone. Um, it looks pretty darn identical to the original. I can find the Ordeus original. No? It's the Bisteria's original. So, the original, you can see kind of how it looks like, the logo. It's much more cleaner, or as far as the clone, it's bigger, bigger, and a little bit a little bit more sloppy, but a little bigger. Okay, um, the holes on the Omega clone are located directly in the middle. Um, on the original, it is located on the sides where the posts are. Negative posts are. Um, does this make a big difference? No, because I can just adjust the coil the way I wanted to. What do I have on this Omega clone? This is some kind of stupid retarded coil, right? I consider it kind of stupid and retarded, but it vapes well. Um, it's so much coil that I had to cover it with a piece of cotton and make the vape sheet downwards. Um, this is triple twisted 28 gauge super nano coil. So I wrapped it around 28 gauge cannonball. This thing heats up so fast that. Um, it's just, uh, you know, I have both holes open roughly at three millimeters. I'm give her a vape on this Magneto because I have the Nemesis on my other Addy at the moment. Yes, oh, it works fine. Again, it's a lot, okay, it's a little harsher. It's not that warm, but it is harsher. It's more harsh. <coughs> um, I could tell that it's producing vapor, and a lot of it. I just don't feel that full throat like warmth. I guess not warmth, but feel of the of the vapor. Um, I guess you could say it's warmth. Okay, I don't like hot vapes, but I like the cool to medium cool vapes, and this is just a, kind of like a really cool vape. Okay, and you'll see this build when I get to my coil section. <coughs> my gosh, um, I don't know if it's the magneto. Or if it's the coil, but I was able to vape on this perfectly fine on my nemesis. Okay. Let's give it another go. Okay. It was because my throat was dry. I'm a single coiler, guys. I prefer single coils, although I do vape dual coil from time to time. If I wanted more vapor, I wouldn't add another coil. I just build my coil smaller, right, with like a super nano like this, and I'll produce just as much vapor as the dual coil setups go. Woo! Holy crap! <clears throat> so, this is the Omega clone. As you can tell, I have no performance issues with it. Um, so if you're looking for the Omega, and I know the originals, they aren't, they're, they're not in production anymore, I believe. Um, but if you're looking for this kind of like, this clone, right? 
this clone, there's it's the, it's the 50 50 market. But if you're looking for well, if it just says Omega clone on there and doesn't say like EH Pro or anything else, then you're looking at this clone. Um, for the bang for the money, hell yeah. <clears throat> so the Omega clone, um, again, just as good as the authentic. Um, you know, I have nothing against clones. I think clones are freaking awesome. It gives you a chance to try out products. Um, see if you like it or not. And if you really do like it, nothing's stopping you from buying the original. Okay. <clears throat> um, that's what happened with me and the Nemesis. I love the Nemesis clone so much that I bought the original. All right, I'm not regretting it at all. Um, although I could have gotten a DNA mod, but I should, probably should have done. But either or, you know, for collector value purposes. Not, you know what? My Nemesis has no collector value because I dropped it like 50 billion times. But <laughs> with all the scratches it has on there. Um, Whatever, so let's put this away. So now on to the next topic. The Dovepo ELBT. So here's my little update on this Dovepo, okay? People have been coming to me and saying, um, hey, I heard the ohm reader on this thing is kind of jacked up. Yes, it is. Um, a few things that I want to actually get off my chest here. Let me see if this is closed up all the way. Um, so I gave this thing a two thumbs up and uh, it's bang for your buck and all that. I guess I guess it still gets a two thumbs up. The thing is, um, the quality on this pretty much everything's spot on. It has a freaking floating center pin that's spring loaded. I think that's so amazing. Um, it has pretty much all the functions, the flashlights, the 18350 and uh, and all that. Um, and it's dust proof, shock proof, and water resistant. It's not waterproof, guys. It's water resistant. And after I opened this sucker up, I don't even believe this is water resistant. It says it is, but I don't. I don't. I wouldn't trust it. Um, so it is a little off aligned. So I did take it apart, and I did see how this thing goes together, and it does not go together quite like I thought it should. Um, as far as if you wanted really good water resistance, but hey, whatever. Um, so, okay, the ohms reader. Um, if you're going to use this in variable wattage, because the ohms checker is all jack all kinds of jacked up, um, it will not give you, it will not provide the wattage that you set it on, okay? Because it checks the ohms, and then it supplies the wattage. That's what it does. That's what variable wattage does. Um, but because the ohm checking function in this chip right here is kind of messed up. Uh, not messed up, I guess it's not accurate. It's, uh, it's some kind of weirdness. I did pop it open, I did test it, and nothing's wrong with the wires. Um, it seems like a lot of people are having the same issue with this ohms checker, and um, I just want to update you on that. This, okay, I took it apart, and I just, I don't know, I just have this kind of like a pulse, um, Compulsive, uh, whatever disorder, whatever thing. It just, it just doesn't feel like I fit it together correctly. Although there's not much to it. Hmm. Anyways, so um, it is pricey. At the same time, it retails for about a hundred dollars. Um, kind of the when you when you get to the the budget hand, I guess okay, according to Green Green, the budget hands. Okay, anything over a hundred dollars, I think, is freaking expensive. And anything a hundred less is affordable. Okay, so if you're gonna pay in the hundred dollar uh, and up range, um, you better have something that other devices don't. That's, that's what I what I personally think, okay? Okay, um, the ohm checker, I had a 0.6 ohm coil in here at one time, or 0.7 ohm, and it read this as 1.6 or 1.7 ohm, so I did go ahead and pop that coil like three or four times. It worked. It faked. And then all of a sudden, it, it went to 0.8 ohms, all right? And then 0.3 ohms, and something like that. It just jumped down. And I wasn't able to fire that coil anymore, so I popped it off, and I was like, oh, I thought this thing fired sub-ohm, right? Because this was when I was relatively still testing it out. And then, um, I, I usually wrap my coils to use on these devices anywhere from 1.3 to 1.5 ohms. That's my preference. Um, like, this Helio is wrapped at 1.33 ohms, okay? And uh, my Vama Risa is 1.2, but whatever, it still fires. Um, this Helios, I purposely did it to kind of fit on this because it looks so beautiful on that ELVT. But here's the thing. This 1.33 ohm coil reads on this as 1.1 and it won't fire. Okay, um, it won't even fire 1.2. It fires from 1.3 and above. So um, this is like my fifth coil 
that I built to try to get the resistance higher. I want to get it as low as possible so it will fire on this thing, but then I don't want to get it too high because I'm going to have to check up the voltage and all that. So that doesn't really disappoint me. Um, it does read ohms a lot lower, and then you'll have a problem firing your lower ohm coils, although they're not that low. Um, they just this thing just reads it as low. Okay. So I pop this open. All right, and I'll show you pictures of that right now. Okay, so you saw pictures of that. So the chip is basically right behind this thin piece of glass, okay? Um, this thin reflective piece of glass is where that chip is. It's the actual chip. And there's another, there's another, um, there's another PCB board right here that controls all the, the outputs and your charge and all that. Okay, there's two, two PCB boards, but one is the main. This is the thing that actually fires the coil and does all that lefty lefty like fire fire smoky baby stuff is right here so this thing's supposed to be shockproof okay what I kind of was disappointed in when I opened it up was there wasn't much shockproof stuff in here okay the what makes this shockproof is this neoprene kind of rubber and the metal case that's all that that was makes this shockproof what makes this water resistant nothing okay nothing makes this water resistant um, I don't even know why they said water resistant. There's no, there's no little, um, I guess, gasket going around the, the covers. There's nothing like that. So this sucker is, um, in my opinion, not water resistant. I would keep it away from water. A few drops on it, it's not going to hurt it. But um, on the wrong spots, hey, you never know. Um, when I did pop this thing open, this whole half came off, um, which is, I don't know why they designed it like that. I wonder why. Because... If this part just came off and there was a kind of a cover for the board and everything, I could unscrew that and take that cover off, it would be a lot more water resistant than as I could just crack this in half off. So um, that is that. Another thing is this part is not protected. Okay, So it is drop proof and shock proof and supposedly, right? If you drop it on the case. But say you dropped it and it came down the wrong angle like this. And there was, I don't know, an atomizer per se on the floor, and it cracked this screen right here. You can essentially break this glass really easily and then break that chip. And if you break that chip right, that's resting right behind this glass, this mod is over. So um, the shockproof portion of this, yeah, it's going to be really hard to actually land on this glass. But either or, I just wish they did something about that. Maybe put some, like, you know, some better glass that that won't crack. Um, this is just a thin piece of glass and I just I was kind of disappointed when I saw that. Um, like I said, these buttons when you're pushing that in, you're actually pushing it on the board itself so it's not separate clicky buttons. It is actually just kind of extended buttons that click on the board. <clears throat> and that's my update for this Dovecoat ELVT. Um, I haven't been getting any usage out of this because I don't have any coils that are that high. Um, maybe if I put a Nautilus tank on here, it'll be definitely, definitely vapable. Um, that's kind of the think about what to do with this. Um, I did buy a battery specifically for this mod, okay, so that when that battery does come in, I could go ahead and just use this mod for that battery, never take it out. I took out the Sony BTC4 battery quite a long time ago because there's no need for that kind of high amp draw. Put an F1860 battery. I took that out because, again, there's no need for such a high amp draw. And I'm going to put a uh, Samsung ICR battery in here. It's not an IMR, it's a lithium cobalt, which is a lot more volatile. But again, there's so much safety built into these chips. I'm not too worried about it. Plus, the max continuous amp draw on that ICR is 5.2 amps. I really doubt this thing will even go anything close to 5.2 amps. So, that's my update on this. Um, I'll save the coil builds for the last. Um, it's just going to be a whole bunch of pictures of coils that I've tested and they're tried and true and they work. Okay, so I'll, I'll save that to the last. The Nemesis body. Well, okay, no, let's go with the FAMO. So I took out this VTC4 Sony battery out of my FAMO. But on the same battery that's going to go into that, uh, 
into Duftful Duff ELVT. Um, it's going to go into the demo. I'm a very honest reviewer. I didn't get this by the company for free for review, so I'm going to be hella honest with it, okay? I'm going to be as honest as I can. All the, the stuff that I purchased, I, 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 all the stuff that you see, I bought. Okay, so none of these were kind of given to me, so they're all purchased by me. So I have no bias on giving it a good or bad review. And this update goes with the same way. Um, okay, let's put this magneto away because I no longer need it. No longer will use it. I don't. I don't use this magneto as often as I want to. I just. I just think that the mod is too big for what it is. <clears throat> Put it back in the Vama. The Vama and the Helios. Let's do a two-in-one update. Okay. What I noticed performed best in a microcoil form factor is triple twisted 32 gauge performed the best. It heats up the quickest and it stays. It retains its heat the best. Um, that way you don't burn out any coils, but then you can still have kind of a high ohm. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop this on. I believe I already dripped in here, but just in case, nope, I did not drip. Okay, so let's drip some of this higher PG fluid just because it's easier to vape on this kind of setup. Ah. So, let's see here. I do have it set on 6 watts, okay? Uh, 6 volts. Um, and it reads 1.2 ohms. Although it is 1.33. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so how she vapes with 32 triple twisted 32 gauge, um, I found to be fantastic. Um, better than all the other all the other setups that I've had that could fire on something like this. This will fire on the eye taste, and it should fire on the Duffpo as well, but it doesn't. Mm. Okay, the, the freaking vapor production is amazing. So if you have a VAMO or a VAMO-like device, like the, the Sageli SPD or, or the Inokin VTR, anything along the lines of that, this setup is pretty much, as far as right now goes, with everything I tried, the best, right? As far as vapor production and flavor goes. Um, I have this set on 6 volts, <coughs> and you can see the cotton, how I cottoned it. I have it wrapped both top, bottom, back, and the only thing that's open is the front. I noticed that this produces the best amount of vapor, as you can see. Um, and it kind of provides a very cool vape. Very good. Okay, what I noticed is um the air hole setup I have this on is it's kind of huge. I drilled those out, breaking two drill bits. So it kind of I'm kind of a little teed off at this kind of setup because I did break two drill bits and I don't think I should have. But I did. Okay, so if I block off one of those air holes. It gives me less vapor. But more flavor. Okay? Vamo. I'm going to talk to you about the Vamo. Um, the center pin was loose. So I went and took it apart. Okay? Took everything apart. And I cut the center pin wire. Um, and I fixed it by just replacing that rubber and putting it upside down, which actually fixed the center pin. Now it stays steady and kind of high. Only issue is I couldn't solder that center pin back on. Okay, the wire did not solder back on the center pin no matter what the hell I did. I don't know how the hell they welded that. Spot weld? Uh -huh. But um, it's freaking in there. So what I ended up doing was getting a, um, getting a crimp and then just putting the wire in the crimp and then just forcing it in the center pin and just crimping it. And that's what I ended up doing. It works fine. That is it. The VAMO chipset, from from what I could tell, um, is pretty much the best chipset out there to date that doesn't, that, that that's like, has the low ohm load kind of protection. So the, all these kind of variable voltage, variable wattage mods that can fire 1.2 and up that cannot fire anything under 1 ohm. Um, 
So this excludes the Segele 20 watt, this excludes the Segele 720, oh, the 722, this excludes DDNA 20, DNA 30s, okay? Those are in this different class. They, they could fire sub-ohm. Um, so anything that, that fires 1.2 ohms and up, the regulated devices, okay? The VAMO is still by far the most powerful device that I've used. Um, it has a 5 amp current load on the chip. So, 5 amps, right? With that 1.3 ohm coil, they being at 6 watt, six volts, I actually get the 6 volts. I could vape up to 6.8 volts, okay? I'm actually getting the 6 volts to that coil. Um, unlike the, <coughs> the 3 amp limits, that I could only push me up to 4.3 volts, okay? At 4.3 volts, I'm maxing out with 3 amps. Um, the VAMO, because it has that 5 amps, I could go ahead and take it up to 6.8, and I'll actually deliver that amount of power. So the VAMO. Um, I ordered the chip set, okay? Just the chip, not the whole VAMO, just the chip. Um, and <clears throat> it, once I build it, I'll tell you where to buy it. Um, uh, it's it's SOSELiquid.com. I keep saying that, but um, I'm going to put it in this Hello Kitty. This Hello Kitty coin bank, okay? I'm going to try to fit a VAMO V5 chipset into this Hello Kitty. I mean, it's freaking tiny, but it's it's so adorable. Huh. Okay, and um, this is a request from my wife. So my wife is the one that actually picked this Hello Kitty bank out, and she keeps asking me when I'm going to build this. Um, so soon, as soon as I get a chipboard in, I will build this. Uh, what I wanted to ask you guys, the viewers, is uh, how do you want me to shoot this? video. Do you want me to shoot it step by step like how to build that mechanical mod video that I have? Where I literally go step by step and shoot everything and just cut out the irrelevant stuff which takes me like a week to edit? Or do you want me to shoot it like the variable voltage um, mod and just put up pictures and to narrate through it? Which they're both kind of how to's, okay? Just one is more comprehensive than the other. <coughs> which reminds me the variable voltage mod that I made, um, I was missing a few pictures, and I just thought I just thought they got erased, right, or they didn't record to my SD card. But what ended up happening was that those pictures actually went into the internal memory of the camera because there I didn't put the SD card in um, and actually found those pictures. So I'll go ahead and put up those pictures now. Okay, and those are the pictures that, that weren't in the how to vape a, um, how to make the variable voltage mod, so, uh. Again, how do you want me to make the video, okay? If I don't get a request, <coughs> I'm probably just going to make it the way I feel, right? But this is going to be a freaking complicated build because I don't have much space in here, so everything is going to be pretty tight as far as tolerances go. So that is that. Get that out of the way now. What else is next in the talking? <clears throat> so, I'm going to make a review. I already made a review on this, but I just didn't post it because so I'm going to make another one. Um, what do I have here? This, my friends, is the most prettiest looking setup I've seen, in my opinion. I think that's a pretty sick looking setup. I'm a huge fan of these cylinder shaped atomizers. This is the IGO W. Alright? Um, I'm a huge fan of that. Why? Because the freaking mod is cylinder shaped. Having the Addy cylinder shape only just complements the mod very well. So I'm a huge fan of that. <coughs> and this huge wide board drip tip. <coughs> not really, not quite all whiteboard per se because the inside is restrictive so you're not going to get that wide airflow but again you're going to get that wide mouthpiece just complements this whole setup so beautifully i did drill that out i drilled it and i tapered it um and then that's the lip so i drilled it kind of huge because i am running a single coil that's a nano coil single nano coil uh, and i've been loving this setup i've been using it since Okay, just before this video, I grinded out that hole just a little bit more, I tapered it just a little bit more, 
that diameter gets a little bigger. <coughs> so what I noticed was I was kind of needing more airflow. And uh, this hit the spot. This hit the spot. Woo. Man, the flavor is freaking amazing. Freaking sick setup. I've been vaping it like this the whole day today, and this is probably the setup I'm going to keep using until I get the clear caps. When I get the clear caps, I'm going to go ahead and... <clears throat> well, it's a PP, PMMA top cap that's fogged up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear that out for you, okay? There's two methods of doing it. One is polishing it. If you have a Dremel, it's going to be much easier. The second is burning it in. I'm going to do it with burning it in. And the reason why I'm going to burn that cap in is because either or, if I polish it, the inside is going to get kind of foggy. The juice is going to make it not clear anymore. <clears throat> but if I burn it in, basically I'm melting that fogginess kind of off. I'm melting the plastic and then reheat, like and then restabilizing it, which is going to be a lot more difficult because it's much more dangerous to burn in those PMMA covers. Okay? Burning it in is definitely something that you should really practice first and then do it. Um, I practiced on many of my tanks that I screwed up. Burned it in, deformed, and now it just leaks and all that. So I did get some practice in. So I'll be burning it in, showing the burning in method. The polishing method is much simpler. Have it there. A little polish. That. Um, the polishing method, yes, much easier. But again, what is polish? It's little tiny like micro elements that put scratches, kind of fill the scratches in. As it kind of scratches, takes off that layer. Um, that's what polish is. Okay, guys. So and the heat from the polish as well could only help clear that up. I don't. I don't prefer it. I just rather just burn it in with a torch. Holy crap, that's dry. So, the nemesis that you see now, you notice that I'm back to my original nemesis with the steel body. Why did I take... Woo, close. Why did I take this off? And why is it no longer blue? Um, okay, so I finally measured the voltage drop with my handy dandy. Um, how you do this is... You get a battery, you put it in, you check the voltage of the battery um, by just checking it on the center pin and body, press it, check the voltage, okay, that's the voltage that's applying at zero load. Um, if your mod is any, any way decent, you're not going to get any voltage drop off a zero load. And then, you get that voltage, and then now you plug in, you, you kind of alligator clip or just hold it into these two posts, I fire it again, at whatever load I have it on this, and then I check the voltage, and that's I just get the voltage drop that way. Now, voltage drop, it, there's so many different factors that matter. One is the coil, okay? What resistance you have on that coil will affect your voltage drop. The next is your battery, okay? So, depending on your battery, you'll have different battery voltage drops. So, really, the mod is just another variable into that whole scheme of things. So trying to get rid of some of that variable, um, I use the same battery, the same tester, the same coil, and the only thing I changed out was the body. And I noticed that I was getting 0.1 volt more drop off this. I remember when I was doing the kind of overview first look on this, I was kind of worried that this might actually produce a little bit more of a voltage drop. Well, my worries actually came into play. Um, 0.1 volts does not seem like all that big of a difference. But when you're vaping down at 3.7, 3.6 volts, right? Between 3.6 and 3.5 is a massive difference. The vape quality just totally changes, okay? And I, I charge my batteries at 3.6 volts. So I've been noticing that I've been charging at this tube, with this tube, at 3.7 volts, which is still vape pretty well. Um, so that's, I'm not using this anymore. <coughs> it's very light. And it's aluminum. It should actually conduct electricity very well. The only real thing I was worried about was that um, it's aluminum, so the threads, right? I'm afraid I was afraid I might strip the threads. Um, how durable is it? <sighs> Man, I dropped this thing. I dropped this like over 10 times, but I dropped it with this 
on this setup are on five times. And on those scratches, as of yet, it, everything's kind of perfect on it. The, the coloring on the thread is going off, but um, but that's about it. So these things are pretty durable, but I do get a voltage drop to a point where, you know what, I use my Nemesis every day. Um, and that point one affected me, so I just took it off. Okay, so now I'm using the original Nemesis, just the way it is, with all banged up, dinged up. Well, and this thing is freaking like a tank. Okay, it's, it's a freaking tank. It's heavy and it's, it performs though. So I'm very happy with that. This drip tip I've had for quite a long time. Um, it was a gift from City Vape Shop. Thank you very much, um, City Vape Shop, for giving me this drip tip as kind of being such a loyal customer. Okay, I bought a whole bunch of stuff from there um, at City Vape Shop, so that is awesome. Um, and I'll take it, you know. Oh my god, there's so much vapor. And if you see the amount of clouds this thing actually produces, it's freaking insane. On a single coil, and um, I prefer single coils, it, the flavor is freaking outstanding. This is probably my new favorite setup. Um, the Igo W cylinder shape looks beautiful. I just freaking love how that looks. The cylinder on cylinder, okay, cylinder on cylinder, it just looks so amazing. Um, I did drill this hole out to two millimeters, and I drilled this out to three millimeters, three a little bit more than three. Okay, and this has the perfect airflow for me. It's still kind of restrictive, but it's perfect for me. Okay, so my wife now wants to sleep, so I'm going to have to cut it off kind of around here. Um, <clears throat> before we kind of you know, end this, I'm going to go ahead and show you the builds that I use. Okay, and the ohms, relative ohms, because they're going to be on the ohms meter, so I'm going to narrate through that right now. So this is the Omega, the original. Um, I have it with dual vertical coils, running triple 28 gauge cam flow. Um, I noticed that the dual vertical coils do perform very well because it, the, the air holes are on the bottom and towards the side of the post. As you can see, the next kind of picture would be, with, would be the ohms I have it on, which is a 0.3 ohm coil. Um, it is wicked and ready to go. Next setup here is the Omega Clone. This is the Omega Clone running a super nano coil. That's triple 28 gauge twisted canthal wrapped around 28 gauge canthal. It is run, reading 0.29 ohms. Um, again, a little bit overkill. The next setup I have is my favorite. This is the Igo W. I'm running a nano coil at 0.47 ohms. Another picture of that nano coil after it's been wicked. My favorite setup for now. Now let's move on to the Trident at 0.52 ohms. It's two nano coils that are um, just dual nano coils, I guess. I believe it's with twisted 28 gauge. I'm not quite sure it is, but it is. What I use the second most is probably this setup at 0.73. It's my Genesis Steam Boy. Um, I use this a lot when I go out and I have it set kind of higher at 0.73 ohms ish so that the battery will last longer. Okay, so this is my 2.3 ohm uh, micro coil that I use to put on my variable voltage, variable wattage devices so that I can go ahead and fire them. Um, they're good for the most part. Now, is this is a cardomizer. Um, I use this cardo. I didn't build a coil on this cardo, but I'm just showing the relative ohms I vape at. Even my cardos, I'm going to have a clear coming up pretty soon. Um, my favorite clear ohmizer is coming up right about now. All right, that is the Aspire Nautilus. Um, I do have a 2 ohm coil in there, reading 2.16 ohms. Um, this, by far, is probably one of my favorite clear ohmizers there are. The other, only other clear ohmizer I use is. Bam! That Kinger Pro Tank. Okay, that's the only other clearizer I use. Um, everything you see here, I've used. Um, kind of give me the relative ohms and all that. So let's go back to me. I'm back. So you saw those coil builds. Those coil builds that you saw 
are the coils that I use on a weekly basis. The first three or four coil builds you saw are the ones I use the most. Um, right now I'm stuck on this Igo W build and I've been stuck on this build for quite a long time. Not quite a long time, maybe a day, two days, but um, that's a long time because this is all I use to vape. Um, the Steam Boy gets used a lot when I go out because it does have a higher ohm. The battery does last me um, a lot longer than my other, my other builds, I guess. My other builds, I could only get 30 to an hour of satisfying vape time. So that's about it. If you have questions about any of the builds you saw, um, please message me. That's going to be the end of the vlog Saturday, which right now it is Sunday. So... Not sure what happened there, but I did start filming at night. Um, I'm, it's the morning now. I slept and woke up. But I'm actually going out to Huntington Garden. Ah, why am I going to Huntington Garden? Because I'm being forced by my wife. And she wants to see flowers. And I'm forced to take her. But yeah, that's, you know, the marriage life, right? So I'm going to Huntington Garden. What setup I will take, I don't know. But hopefully I'll shoot some footage there and maybe make a video out of it. Alright, thanks for watching.